U.S. Men's National Team head coach, or at least interim to the interim head coach, B.J. Callahan, has released a list of 23 names that will take part in this summer's Gold Cup. Now, if you're keeping track, we have the Nations League and then the Gold Cup. These are two different tournaments with two different rosters, although there is some crossover players, but we'll get into that in a minute. It's a really interesting roster because if you contrast it with the Gold Cup, or the last iteration of the Gold Cup, uh, I think it signals a moving on for the U.S. Men's National Team from a lot of these players. You have a lot of younger players entering this group. You have a lot of players who, who maybe have moved on from this group. It's, it's a really interesting group of names with a real opportunity for some of these guys at some of these key positions to potentially earn their way onto the U.S. Men's National Team roster. Some guys who were potentially in spots where they're sort of on the cusp of being with the senior group. So we'll get into all that and more on this episode of The Yank Report. What's up? My name is Sam. Welcome to The Yank Report, a show all about all things American soccer. If you're into that, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. We're going to jump right into the goalkeepers whenever we come back after a word from our sponsor. Bet Online is your number one source for all your basketball news, stats, and scores. Get the latest odds and lines and the latest match reports for this year's NBA playoffs. Bet Online is your sports intel headquarters this season as we have you covered for all your insider sports wagering needs from basketball, Major League Baseball, NHL, hockey, golf to UFC and boxing. The fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, including live betting options and your favorite casino and card games, available to play right now from your home. Get into the action today, so head over to our website and use your mobile device to join, and be sure to use our promo code BELIEVE to receive your 50% bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, where the game starts. So starting with the goalkeepers, it's an interesting group of, of, of youth and veterans and all in between with Sean Johnson, Gaga Salonina, and Matt Turner. Salonina is probably the name that jumps out at us because he is just the, the young, future, hopeful player who has all the potential in the world to become just one of the top keepers around. He is the teenage goalkeeper from the Chicago Fire who signed with Chelsea, who recently took part in the U.S.'s U-20 tournament and is now being brought up for the Nations League roster. I don't know if he'll see a ton of time, though, because the U.S.'s current number one, Matt Turner, is in this group. Matt Turner is one of the five players pulling double duty for both the Nations League and the Gold Cup. Sean Johnson rounds it out. Sean Johnson is with the Nations League's group as well. I think we're in a spot where we have a few keepers that are out injured and Ethan Horvath and Zach Steffen, who probably would take part in some of these rosters. We move on to center backs. Another interesting group here. We have Miles Robinson, Aaron Long, Jalen Neal, and Matt Miazga. Miles Robinson, one of the five players that is going to be pulling double duty this summer in both the Nations League and the Gold Cup. Um, I wonder if this means that Miles Robinson might not be getting the bulk of the minutes in the Nations League. I, I don't know. I, I'm sure he's going to be one of the top guys for the U.S. Men's National Team in this tournament. The Gold Cup four years ago was one of the things that really propelled him into being one of the top center backs for the U.S. Men's National Team throughout World Cup qualifying. He was one of the players of the tournament in that Gold Cup. So hopefully similar things to come from him. I think the two interesting names here are going to be Jalen Neal, who's a very young player for the U.S. Men's National Team. I believe he was called up to the U-20 group, but wasn't released for that. So here he is a part of the Gold Cup. I wonder if he's going to be able to get minutes. And Matt Miazga, who is a player who was formerly a part of the U.S. Men's National Team. I mean, there's that famous picture of Matt Miazga and Diego Linez from USA versus Mexico games of years past. But he wasn't really a part of the U.S. Men's National Team throughout World Cup qualifying and, and throughout much of the Burhalter era. Here's his opportunity back with the national team, and we'll see what he can do with it. Aaron Long is part of this group, which is going to upset a lot of people. One thing at center back, I think it must be mentioned, there's a few players that people are calling for that aren't a part of this group. Cameron Carter-Vickers is out uh, injured. Mark McKenzie is a player a lot of people wanted to see in this tournament, but Mark McKenzie had a shoulder injury. At least that's what's being reported by the Belgian media. He had a dislocated shoulder, and I think that's what's holding him out of this group right now. Mark McKenzie is one of those players that I think is on the cusp of the senior team right now. He had an outstanding season in Belgium. At fullback, we continue this theme of, of old and young. We have DeAndre Yedlin and Dewan Jones sort of uh, symbolizing the veterans, even though I think DeAndre Yedlin has a few more years on Dewan Jones at this point. And Brian Reynolds and John Tolkien. Uh, this is an interesting group because I think we saw in the Nations League roster, the U.S. only called up three fullbacks to the senior team. Uh, and, and I think that's there, there's a reason for that. There's just not a lot of guys who have shown that 
uh, they can be part of the senior team roster and play at that level uh, reliably. I wonder, especially at that left back position where we have Dewan Jones and John Tolkien, if there's opportunity there to really earn a senior team roster spot or at least get an opportunity at a senior team roster spot with a good performance in this tournament. Really interested to see what Brian Reynolds does with this tournament if he's able to overtake DeAndre Yedlin at that right back position. DeAndre Yedlin, of course, coming in as the veteran, a guy who I, he's probably has the most caps out of anybody in this entire uh, roster and is the preemptive captain coming in. But Brian Reynolds is that player who had all the hype whenever he came out of FC Dallas and was being chased after by all these Serie A clubs, ends up going to Roma, just is never able to break into that group, ends up kind of bouncing around, finds himself some footing over in the Belgian league with Westerloo, puts together a really nice season, and all of a sudden uh, there's all these rumors about him getting a potential transfer. Uh, Where does he stand in that right-back situation? It seems like Serginho Dest and Joe Scali are... They had their names written in marker at this point for the foreseeable future. But can Brian Reynolds kind of knock on that door and 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 put together some good seasons and put himself back into that picture for the right back for the U.S. Men's National Team? The first step would be beating out DeAndre Yedlin in this tournament. Will we see that from him in this Gold Cup? I think it's a great opportunity for him. In the midfield, we have Jean-Luc Abusio, Jordi Mihailovic, Christian Roldan, James Sands, Alan Sonora, and Aiden Morris. And when we talk about the midfield, I think we always kind of speculate as to what type of uh, formation that the U.S. will play based on what players they called in. Throughout Greg Berhalter's tenure, it was that 4-3-3 with a defensive midfielder being either Tyler Adams or Kellen Acosta. Uh, we don't have Kellen Acosta in this group. Kellen Acosta, I believe, is out with an injury. He wasn't. He didn't take part in the last couple of games for LAFC. But this group has has some mysteries here. I mean, we have James Sands and Aiden Morris who could potentially play the six. They could both be that Tyler Adams-type defensive midfielder. Jean-Luc Abusio could also be that deep-lying playmaker as well if the U.S. opts to go with a 4-3-3. But we also have guys on this list who could potentially play in that number 10 spot in Jordi Mihailovic or Alan Sonora. Uh, Sonora is, is a player that I, I mentioned during the Nations League roster video as a player who I was questioning whether or not it'd be better for him to be in that Gold Cup roster because it seems like he was going to be on the outside during the Nations League. And I, I kind of want to see a little bit more of him. I want to see if he actually is a player that deserves to be in that in that first team group where he's been getting call ups for recently. I just haven't seen much from him. I'm excited to see a little bit more. I'm excited to see what players shake out. Aiden Morris, of course, kind of flirted with the uh, with the possibility of playing for Canada. He ended up selecting the U.S. A lot of promise with Aiden Morris. And the backup to Tyler Adams is a position that is absolutely up for grabs. So is Aiden Morris going to be able to maybe throw his name in the hat as a player to look out for during this cycle? Jean-Luc Abusio made the big move to the Serie A a few seasons ago. And and since then, his, his, you just haven't heard much from him. He had that fateful game against, away against Jamaica where he just did not show very well. This is his opportunity back with the national team. Is he going to be a better Jean-Luc Abusio than we saw in the last Gold Cup, where he was great on the ball whenever he had space, but seemed to be a traffic cone whenever a lot of fast physical play was moving all around him? There's a few guys not in this group that that I've heard people discuss. Uh, Tanner Tessman is one. Uh, Tanner Tessman, of course, plays for the same team as Jean-Luc Abusio, and at this point has outperformed him. So it's a bit surprising to see Busio there instead of Tessman. I've heard some some just rumors on Twitter for uh, reasons why Tessman is not with the squad, but I didn't see any of those substantiated. So um, until I see some confirmation from some actual reporters, I'm not going to just spread rumors. But uh, there seems to be some reasons, at least, why he wasn't with the group. Malik Tillman, I, I believe, was injured for the Nations League, so I'm presuming that he's still injured for this. Uh, I saw Timothy Tillman was listed in the injury list with LAFC with a lower extremity injury, whatever that means. We move on to the winger group where I think things get really interesting because I think the back end of the U.S. Men's National Team winger pool is really up for grabs at this point. With Gio Reyna moving out from that winger position into more of a number 10 role with the senior group, and we're seeing Polisic, Reyna, and Weah all potentially starting at the same time, it opens up more roster spots for that winger position. Uh, during the last cycle, I think those fifth and sixth winger position roster spots were going to Jordan Morris and Paul Ariola. Uh, Paul Ariola is out injured currently, but Jordan Morris is in this group. 
And he's joined by a few people who I think are ready to take that position away from him or at least fight him for it. Uh, one is Cade Cowell, the really exciting youngster who was just with the U-20s, a player capable of putting together just incredible highlight real plays, runs, just um, a phenomenal athlete, very reminiscent, I think, of Jordan Morris. And then Alejandro Zendejas listed as Alex Zendejas on the roster. Uh, Zendejas has been getting call-ups with the senior national team recently, along with Taylor Booth. I think those guys are kind of fighting it out for that back end of the winger pool roster spot. This is another opportunity for us to see what, what Zendejas can do with some extended time. Um, Zendejas has had some, some good games and some bad games for the U.S. men's national team. And I'm excited to see what he does with this group with, with the, uh, maybe a lower level of competition where it's more on him to, to put it together. I, I'm very fascinated to see how K. Cal stacks up against Jordan Morris uh, and, and where Alejandro Zendejas kind of fits in in all of this. Now at the forward spot, I think we have the top two MLS guys in Jesus Ferreira and Brandon Vasquez. I think last season, Brandon Vasquez just kind of came out with, with a, a just a ton of goals and really put his name on the map as a potential uh, call in for the U.S. Men's National Team. He just never really got that opportunity to play with the senior group just for one reason or another. So he kind of missed out on that cycle. At the same time, Jesus Ferreira is a guy that seemed to got get a lot of opportunities with the U.S. Men's National Team throughout last cycle. Um, it seemed like it, it, every time something happened, Jesus Ferreira was just available and there and got a lot of run. Of course, he didn't really ingratiate himself with the fan base. And at this point, it's kind of persona non grata with the fan base. If you mention him or post a picture of him, you're going to get a, a lot of abuse just straight up. Uh, Ferreira actually had a um, an article come out recently where he mentioned some of the abuse and, and just hearing some of the noise. But in, in all that, I think Ferreira's putting together a pretty incredible season right now. Uh, he's one of the goal leaders in MLS. Uh, he's just doing everything for FC Dallas right now. Uh, still very much a, a player that's in the conversation for, I guess, the top five, the top four strikers in the pool, something like that. It's going to be interesting to see which guy emerges out of these two. I, I think just like that winger position, we're looking at kind of rounding out the, um, the, the pool, rounding out the striker pool behind Pepe and Balogun, who are the next guys? It's probably Josh Sargent after that. And then after that, who is it? Uh, I think Ferreira is very much in the conversation with like Haji Wright and Jordan Pifak in that pecking order. And this could uh, either go a long way to solidify that or Brandon Vasquez can prove that he deserves more opportunities than he's been given so far. Uh, Brandon Vasquez does not have the goal output that he did last season. He's not scoring as much as Jesus Ferreira right now, but Vasquez is on a team in, in FC Cincinnati that is playing very well in MLS, that's scoring a lot of goals, um, and maybe the back half of the season we'll see Brandon Vasquez come alive. So that's the 23 coming in for the Gold Cup, and I, I think it's a really interesting group of, of, of names, and I think it's a it's a pretty strong roster, especially defensively uh, on the back end coming into this tournament. And I think the U.S. has every chance to go out there and and, and defend their title, go back to back. Um, I, I haven't yet seen who Canada or Mexico are going to be bringing in, uh, but I think this is a strong group of players, of guys, that proven goal scorers, proven defenders, uh, veterans all throughout, and, and then a mix of, of young players, which I think is really fun because – you know, the U.S. is coming off of the missing generation, a whole group of players who were just not up to the standard to to fill in for the U.S. men's national team. And we saw what happened in 2018 because of it. To be able to see some of these young guys like like Kay Cowell and Aiden Morris, um, Brian Reynolds kind of come in and start filling in these positions. Guys like Jesus Ferreira and Brandon Vasquez, who are, are leading strikers in MLS, who were uh, just not on that level for the senior team, but are coming in for the Gold Cup. I think that's a that's a really cool thing. I think it's great that in a lot of these position groups, just the fight for roster spots is going to be fierce. It's intense, and and that's the way it should be for for a um, a national team, and especially a national team with the ambitions that the U.S. Men's National Team has. Uh, the Gold Cup is always, always, always a breeding ground for that cycle. It always kind of sets the tone. And there's always players that show well in the Gold Cup and end up getting big runs in that cycle. Um, I, I think in the last cycle, it was Kellen Acosta and Miles Robinson uh, and w Walker Zimmerman as well, who went on to uh, become big groups of that national team that we didn't necessarily think 
were going to happen prior to that Gold Cup. Who were going to be those players from this year? It, it's we we don't know yet. Um, I, I think it's funny that every time these Gold Cup rosters come out, people are invariably upset that there's the big names aren't in or some of these young players aren't in. But as soon as the games start, everybody is locked in, and and there's always some interesting things that happen. Uh, we'll see what happens under head coach B.J. Callahan. I'm sure the U.S. has a lot more interesting things to happen this summer. But that's my take on the roster. What are your thoughts on this group of 23? Are, are there players that aren't on the roster that you hope to see? What do you think is going to happen with like Cade Cowell and that winger group? What, how do you think things are going to shake out uh, with this striker position with Jesus Ferreira and uh, Brandon Vasquez? What, what about the center backs? Is Jalen Neal going to get an opportunity there? Do you think Brian Reynolds overtakes DeAndre Yedlin in that right back position? Uh, what about Aiden Morris, man? The guy who we thought was Canadian a couple weeks ago and now is uh, called up to the Gold Cup. It's it's going to be a fascinating tournament and, and I'm really excited for it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. If you would like to have the Yanker Porton podcast form, you can find it anywhere podcasts are found. If you haven't yet, hit that like button. It really helps out the channel. If you really want to support the channel, you can do so directly by becoming a member. Shout out to my tier two members. Manuel Alivares, Matthew Doyle, Matthew Hanna, Michael Baker, Dan McVeigh, Mike Irish, Aaron M, Expats Everywhere, and Aaron Silva. Guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is Sam, and this is the Yank Report brought to you by Bet Online.